Hey, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Cathedral Window Patriotic Pillow. Now notice the beautiful patriotic quilt behind us in the Cathedral Window styling. It's the same process, but I figured I'd show you on a smaller scale and how to make the pillow. Now of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to get the download for the project, the link is in the description box below. And of course, you can always go to the bottom of the Shabby Fabrics homepage, click on free downloads. There's this project and many others as well. We're always coming up with new DIY and quilt projects for you. Now, if you've never done a cathedral window, I am excited to tell you this is way easier than it looks. When I first saw the cathedral window, which has actually been around for hundreds of years now, um, it, I was like, oh, that's that. I can't do that. It's curves. It's complicated. Not even close. So let me show you how it goes together. Now, I did previously record um, a cathedral window pillow using a different method of how to make the actual squares. This is an updated version. I think it's easier. So let me show you how to do it. You'll start off with 10 inch squares. And why I love this is if you're going to be using layer cakes, those are 10 inch squares. Now, of course, we used a very specific blues and reds uh, repetition, but if you used a layer cake, each of your squares could be different. So depending on the project you're going for, um, maybe that's ideal for you. So pre-cuts are wonderful because the 10 inch squares are cut. In this case, we just use yardage and use 10 inch squares. Now, um, the first thing we're going to do is just simply fold this in half, wrong sides to, excuse me, right sides together. And let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. I'm going to sew this side and this side a quarter inch seam. So let's do that now. You will want coordinating thread for this project because you do see stitching on the top. So in this instance, I have blue in my machine right now. And of course, when I was doing the, when I would be doing the red, I would be switching to a red thread. So um, normally with quilting, we're just using a neutral thread. That's not that way this time. So let's get started. And you do want to back stitch. You want to secure your stitches. Great, and let's just go do the other side. Again, securing our stitches. Okay, so let's just use these Kai scissors. I just recently started using these Kai scissors. Oh my goodness. These are absolutely fabulous. I know when I first started quilting, I was like, oh, I've got scissors. Well, I don't have these scissors. These are fabulously sharp. Be careful. If you do have little ones in the house, um, put these somewhere high and above and away so that the kids can't cut themselves. I've cut myself already on these a couple times, so just be careful. Um, so I, you saw me sew both sides. Now, this is, this is pretty cool. I'm actually going to go ahead and open this up and now go this direction, nesting my seams. One direction, one seam will go left, the other will go right. I'm gonna go ahead and pin. This is my new favorite magnetic pin holder I, um, because I love how I can get my finger underneath here. I love how it's just, and I also, this is cool, watch this. It's like my favorite trick. No matter how scattered out my pins are, it lines them all up beautifully and I can easily get in there and get a pin, um, and I love that. Those types of engineering, that's the Clover magnetic pin cushion. They've just really thought that through. So with these seams, they're interlocking, and I'm kind of feeling where they interlock, and I'm gonna put a pin right there. And I'm gonna go to the machine right now, and we're, we, what we'll do is, of course, we're not gonna sew all the way from top to the bottom, or this thing would be closed up. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam just to the point where I'm at the pin. Then I'll, I'll readjust. It's a little bit awkward, but follow me. You'll see, you'll see how this actually happens. Just smooth it out. Let's reinforce. Let's make sure that seam wants to lie down for me lay down rather, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go just to that point about right there. Needle down. 
Now I'm going to make, I'm just going to adjust this. So again, it's lying nice and smooth. You see that. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch a little bit more forward. Secure that. I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to jump forward about two inches. Coming back down. Reinforcing and finish up. That opening allows me to now turn my square. So let's go ahead now. We've got our opening and we'll just simply turn this through. One of the things I love about um, this approach versus the other approach where you had to turn. It's a completely different approach. If you're curious what that is, again, just go to our YouTube channel and click on Cathedral Window. You'll, you'll be able to call up the other, the other video and it's also a pillow. Um, I think this method is easier. I think it's more accurate. Um, I'm really happy that I found this. Um, but you're gonna go ahead and turn that through. Now it's hard to get my fingers in those corners. Of course, I want a nice, crisp corners. That's where this turning tool is is really helpful. Be careful. It is pokey enough that you could go through the corners. Now that it's nice and smooth, so you have this opening. Here's the coolest thing. You don't have to go sew that closed by hand. Through the natural process of how this works, it will go ahead and close. Now I've got my square. I'm going to go to my iron and press this. Um, Normally I don't use steam when I'm, I'm quilting, but I'm not quilting right now. So in this instance, I do recommend if you have steam, you might want to use this in this step because this is where accuracy really matters. Where that opening was, I simply let it just fold close the way it naturally wanted to do. I didn't do anything in particular. It just wants to naturally go closed. So I've got my center here. This is kind of an origami thing. In fact, let me bring this more center so you can see the pressing. Again, if I had steam, I would absolutely be using it. Let's bring that to that point and we'll press. You can do opposites if you'd like, or you can just work your way around either way. The whole idea though, and you can see now, uh, use some sizing as well. I forgot to mention that um, because this, you do want this to hold its shape. You do want this to hold its creases. Using some sizing up front is going to help this whole process. I could use it now, but it is a little bit after the fact. So I'd recommend you doing that right out of the, right out of the gate. Um, probably even a little bit before you cut your, your uh, um, squares. So let's give a nice good press here. I might use some pins right now to assist me just to keep everything a little more closed. But you get the idea. This thing is now basically a square again, except that it is simply um, smaller. Now you'll make, let me, in fact, let me show you this. Let me show you what this grid looks like before it comes into the pillow. I was, for me, when I'm making a project, if I can see kind of the little bit further down the road, it's helpful for me to understand that. So we've made more of these squares out of the red, right? Just like this row. In fact, which row is this specifically? That's this row right here. We have this one, this one. I think we did use some sizing, uh, size that more. And I think we did use steam with that. And that's notice how that one, those stay closed and this is not. So if there was ever a reason to use steam, it's pretty obvious why now. So this is that top row. So once you, you get nine of those put together, and let me show you what that's gonna look like, just so you see where you're going. That's what this is going to look like in the end. But let me tell you how you get to that stage. Now that you have these kind of sandwiches made, as you can see, there's a very strong crease here, and there's a very strong crease here. We will simply lie those together like this and I'm going to pin that. I, want, I do not want anything to move on me right now. And we will stitch where I can see is that valley. That's the, the crease. So let's go ahead and do that now with a straight stitch.
And yes, I am using blue on red. That's all right. This is going to be hidden. Don't worry. Doesn't feel natural. <laughs> Doesn't look natural to me either. I'm not used to seeing that kind of contrast. So let's take that pin out so I can show you what, where we're going here. So you see now how those are connected, right? Side by side. And of course, with the next one, same. You will bring those two flaps up. Again, you're pinning and sewing here. Now we've done, I think we need to do that one together. I don't think we have that row done ahead of time. Let's do that now. In fact, I can see the seam a little bit easier on the red. So I'm gonna flip over so I can see that. A little bit harder to see on the, on the blue. Let's do that now. Okay, so that's how my first row is going together. And these little flaps do drive you a little bit crazy. <laughs> Even if at this point, just, just to keep it less floppy, you wanted to kind of secure things close. I mean, you could do that or you just deal with that. Um, so of course, for the next row, we'll lead with the blue, red, blue. And we've got that, that done ahead of time. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. And just like before, no different. You will simply bring the flaps up. I see the valley and I'm going to sew. Except this time, I can prepare all three of those simultaneously, pinning those together. No, nothing's going to move on us. And then, as you can imagine, you'll simply sew in the valley across all three and now that entire row is connected. So let's look at that. See that? So you're just gonna very carefully get everything lined up and simply sew here all the way across. And then you'll do one more row and then you'll have this grid. All right, so let's, let's jump to that point. You get the idea of how that's gonna work. We've got these flaps running around, right? Driving you a little bit crazy. What we do, and let me show you on the back side. It's gonna be easier for you to understand it if you can see it from the overhead camera. We'll switch presser feet right now from the quarter inch presser foot, which is what I had on there, to kind of a more open toe. I need to be using a zigzag on a fairly short stitch length and fairly narrow. And I'll be running that about Oh, I'd say a quarter of an inch above and below and left and right of where those points come together. I don't know if the overhead camera can see that, but I'll be doing that with you. So if you can't see that, no worries. Now, I've done all of them ahead of time except for the one. This is the one we'll be doing together. This is why I have a blue thread right now. Um, by the way, this is the Masterpiece Superior Threads. I love this product. It's a 50 weight Egyptian cotton, 100% cotton thread. It's not a poly cotton blend, and I love using cotton thread with cotton fabric. So if you're looking for a great source of thread, I love it. It's the only thing I sew with right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I found this to be, I'm going to use this thing called the Purple Thing. I've been hearing about this product for years and, and have not actually used it till this project, and boy, did it come in handy. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and change out my presser foot at this point. So let me do that real quick with you. And of course I need to change my stitch as well. We'll be switching to a zigzag stitch and the setting I have for this one is a 0.8 or 1.4 I believe and a 0.8 on my length. Now I've got the proper presser foot. I'm on a zigzag with a very narrow width and a pretty short stitch length. I'm going to bring this up and the whole idea here is to secure that center, kind of basically lock it down. I will start above a quarter inch approximately above that intersection and start stitching vertically. And I want to use, <laughs> I noticed when I started stitching these down, 
as I'm stitching, this flap wants to keep coming up. This is where this thing called purple thing um, is just really helpful. It keeps my fingers away and keeps my fingers safe uh, while I'm using a tool to assist me to get the job done. So here we go. Let's start with needle down. Okay. See how this is keeping me safe, keeping the point down, accomplishing the goal, and I'm not risking uh, hurting myself, which I have definitely done in the past. Um, if you go a little bit longer than a quarter of an inch, don't worry. It's going to be hidden. Don't worry about ripping it out. Um, I definitely went more than a quarter of an inch and it's going to be just fine. So no worries there. Now you could just clip your threads the way I did, or you could pivot and just keep going. I tend to clip my threads, um, but you, I probably didn't need to do that. I could have probably just lifted my presser foot up and uh, just pivoted around to the other side. Same thing, a quarter inch away. Press your foot's down. I've got my tool to assist me. Here we go. Smooth that out. Okay, now we're ready to go. Of course, you would just repeat that step uh, with all nine of those. Um, of course, you'll be doing all the blue at the same time, and then you can switch thread and go to um, all of the red. Now that you have this part done, and this is this is the prep work, and now you're really going to move into the to a process that I is well, the whole thing to me is fun, but the next step is really what is makes it the cathedral window. So now we've got our sandwiches and we've got our grid. Now what we need to do is in these intersections, we're going to actually glue with the Roxanne's glue based it, our uh, cream or white pieces of fabric. I think these are two and a half inches. This of course will all be in the download. Um, so you don't need to worry about writing any of that down. So we're just going to put some dabs of glue. Roxanne's glue based it. I use for just about everything. It's a water soluble glue. Um, I have never had it yellow over time. You don't have to wash your project. You could, but it's not as though you need to worry about getting that glue out of there. You just don't. So here's my intersection right here. I'm going to just place this with the idea that I have the same distance around here. Um, the same, I guess I'd call a seam allowance. It's not technically a seam allowance, but the same distance around that. And I will simply continue to put these in this window. Now in the corners, notice how, just to fill it out and give it a little bit more personality, I don't know if you can see it. Here it's just a lighter red than here. Um, we did a different blue in that corner. So in the main windows, I'll be laying out, here I'll just show you what this is gonna look like. We're just going to be laying that out and mix and match your creams. You can imagine this would be a great scrappy project too. We do have kits available on this. If you want to make the fabrics uh, or make the pillow in the exact same fabrics, we definitely have kits. Um, or just use, use your own and do something scrappy. This, of course, does coordinate with the flag quilt behind me. So if you are going to be purchasing that kit this would be a great add-on it's very economical as well okay that's how these will lay out and then of course and I'll, I'll glue those down off camera you don't need to see me glue again these are the ones that it's the same size two and a half inch simply cut on the diagonal that's all you had to do those are going to go in this slot and go ahead you want that to go all the way to the edge. Don't leave a buffer there because when we put the backing on the pillow, this will catch that raw edge in the seam allowance. So unlike here where you have the same distance around, not so on the very edge, bring it all the way, all the way to the edge and the buffers here and you get the idea. We'll keep putting blues here and reds where the red is. When I come back, I'll have those all glued down and I'll take you to the next step that actually makes that cathedral window. 
So all of my squares and my triangles are now glued down and I'm ready to go the next step. This is what takes this project from something that looks a little odd, to be honest with you, and turns it into the cathedral window uh, blocks that you see here. Now simply, I, the overhead camera should get this. I'm gonna start with the blue because I have the blue thread in here. This is color 175 and I know for the red, this is color 170 masterpiece. Again, um, the 50 weight cotton is what we used on the project. So I'll be sewing all the blue squares because I don't want to change thread. Um, I, or I would sew all the blue squares. Don't worry, I won't sew them all with you. <laughs> but I'll do all the blue and then switch to the red. Simply starting here or on any of the blues, you will simply roll this back. Because you tacked it at these places, it, it doesn't give at these points, but it does in between, and this is on bias, and we will simply roll those back and we will stitch. Now you could pin that if you would like, or simply let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Let's start with, we'll start with this side, and I'm going to trim pretty close to that edge. I want you to see that. I don't know if you can on the overhead camera. We're probably a sixteenth of an inch away from that edge. Um, you want to lay that down good and, and flat, and of course you don't want that to flare up, so you are pretty close to the edge. Um, let's go ahead and give this a, a shot here. I, of course, am no longer in the zigzag. I have a very open toe um, presser foot. I've also done this with a zipper foot and had a lot of success, so that's another option for you. So let's start at that point. I'm going to start with my needle down. So I know exactly where we're going to begin. Take a few stitches. I'm just going to reinforce slightly going back. And I'm going to leave that open and I'm, I'm going pretty slow here. I want to be very accurate sewing right along that edge. I'm going to stop needle down here and just pivot slightly. I might get that purple thing out just because I do see the temptation to want to put my fingers in there. <laughs> and that's not a good temptation. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to pivot. And I'm going to roll that edge down. So my next stitch, I'm going to begin right there. And again, stitching very close to the edge, slowly, carefully, accurately. adjusting as necessary. As I get a little bit closer, I want to resist the temptation of getting my fingers in there. Let's pick up one more time. Again, I'm going to lift and pivot. Let's roll this back. I even like to get the first stitch or two kind of done a little bit by hand because I want this to be very accurate. There we go. Now we've got a little flow going. Now again, I can just simply lift and I'm going to roll back and we're just going to conti continue doing this process. In fact, I'll finish this last one and then we'll go ahead and we'll finish up the pillow. It's just the same process over and over again. If you 
let me say this. Let's just say, let's say you don't know how to pivot at this point. You've kind of got a little bit lost in the project. No problem. Go ahead and pull away, clip your threads, take a deep breath and simply start again. You don't have to. The sewing and pivoting is not critical. The way that I'm anchoring my needle, turning 180 degrees, going that doesn't really matter. If you do one arc of it, stop, start again, do whatever's comfortable for you. You know the result you're going for, do whatever methodology and approach works best for you to get the desired results. This is just a way to not have to start and stop and clip my threads, kind of just to kind of keep uh, flowing from here to there. Let's do one more time how you just started again. Again, if I want to have some assistance from my tool just to kind of hold that in place or I can do that with my finger by feeling brave. that tool again. I have literally sewed through my fingernail. This happened. So don't, don't be me. <laughs> don't do that. Now, of course, you'll discontinue um, doing your cathedral window with your blue, make a thread change to your red and finish that up. Once that's done, you'll need to get your backing prepared. We did an envelope backing on the pillow. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you don't have to do the envelope backing. I like it because if that way, if the pillow ever got dirty, you want to wash it, or you maybe you want to change that out and use the pillow form for something else, you are, are able to do that. So I do like the envelope backing. Um, I found a really cool tool at International Quilt Market, and this is from Clover. I love it. Let me just demonstrate it for you while I make the backing, and you'll see why this product is absolutely invaluable. Um, sometimes when you have to turn something under, and you have to press it, let's say you're supposed to turn it under a quarter inch or a half an inch or three quarter, you're kind of guessing usually. You're kind of like, well, yeah, I think that's about a quarter and pressing. Well, the beautiful thing about this tool is it's so heat tolerant that it can accept the hottest setting on your iron and it has guides for you so you know exactly when you are at your quarter or your half or whatever measurement it is that you're actually going for. So I've got that here and I'm kind of pushing that edge. Let's go ahead and just begin to press. What a great tool. And I, this is what I'm finding about Clover products. They're well engineered. They really have thought through so many of the subtle nuances of crafting and quilting and their tools um, just make, make, the whole process so much more fun and more accurate. So those are two things I am always after. More fun and of course more accuracy. I love that. So let's press that and you can leave that iron on there for as long as you want. It doesn't discolor this tool. It doesn't damage this tool and now I know I am truly turned under a half of an inch. Now I'm going to take a nice healthy bite at this. Let's go a full inch under one more fold and I have my nice one inch line. I'm just going to push there so there's a nice crisp edge. Yes, I'm exactly where I want to be. I don't have a lot of notions in my sewing room. I just don't. I'm not one of those people that if a notion comes out, I just buy it. I have to truly see the value in that to want to add that to my sewing room because I don't want to clutter up my already very full sewing room. So I will only um, purchase the notions that truly benefit my, my sewing, leave me with a better result. So I'm only going to share those notions that truly I feel have, have great value. Um, once that's done, let's just quickly take that to the sewing machine and we'll secure that edge. I'm using about an eighth inch seam allowance. You can use a quarter. Those 
threads. All right, so with our pillow top, of course, this would be done. Now this is our backing. With an envelope backing, this is the edge we just turned under. Here and here, got some more threads. And then the other side, there and there. Simply pin all the way around, sew all the way around, and simply turn it through. And that's all there is to making the Cathedral Window Patriarch Pillow with Shabby Fabrics.